Hello, everyone. Santa here, and welcome to my patron podcast for, what is this, May 2021? The patron podcast, for those who do not know, is a podcast that the topic is selected by my patrons over at patreon.com slash Santier. If you want to have a voice in that, suggesting topics and voting on them, you can sign up over at my Patreon, as I previously mentioned, patreon.com slash Santier. So we had a winning topic for this month, a singular winning topic, and it is, what are my thoughts on Star Trek Enterprise? So for some context, my family has been watching through Star Trek for we did the math and, and checked out the dates, and it's been a bit over three years now. So we've watched through the original series, Next Generation, uh, Deep Space Nine, Voyager, and Enterprise, and a couple of seasons of Discovery now as well. So that's a lot of Star Trek. Uh, and Enterprise is the most recent one, and has kind of a reputation for being not very good. Um, so before I launch into my thoughts at large, I just want to make everybody aware that there will probably be some amount of spoilers um i actually have a list uh the submitter of this particular topic had a long list of guiding questions for it which i think i'll probably go through just because it will help um make sure i don't ramble on the same topic over and over again or, or whatever it helps direct and focus this so i'm going to go ahead and go through those so there will be some discussion of like the finale and things like that but uh i will generally be talking in generalities but like i said some spoilers so just just be aware of that um i'll just start by noting that i'm a little surprised by the um the general opinion that people have but we'll get down to that later it's uh, it's actually one of the the list here so let's just go ahead and start going through these um starting with what do I think of Star Trek Enterprise as a prequel? How does it fit in with the larger Star Trek canon? And do you like that they chose this era of Star Trek history to flush out? And do I think uh, do I like their use of time travel, the temporal Cold War, to reference the future? Uh, so that's a bunch of different things and kind of that initial point, but around this idea of Star Trek Enterprise is a prequel. And I think that's definitely an interesting way to take it. We've seen a lot of stuff, and I think this is part of what got people uh, with it, as well is it very much so is trying to not be um as i look up into my thinky corner i don't know why that corner is where i store my thoughts uh but i think that enterprise's choice to be a prequel is an interesting one i think it's interesting to explore that area it definitely introduces challenges to do things as a prequel, but I feel like Enterprise overall did a decent job of doing so. They showed stuff with the past and gave indications of how it, it went to the future. Um, and I think they did an overall pretty solid job of doing that. One of the biggest challenges, I think, with trying to do a prequel, especially in something that's more of a technologically oriented property, so Star Wars is influenced by this, Star Trek is... you've more influenced by this i think uh is the impact of our own real world technology uh, and that makes it really difficult because when you do something as a prequel inevitably the way things have been going our technology in the real world is more developed than it was when the first thing was made so when you're going into the future that's easy you can kind of update their technology based upon how we've updated ours uh, and the impacts of our updated technology and our understanding of the world but when you're going backwards, you're suddenly hampered by what did they do previously. So, as an example, the original series had these hand communicators uh, that are frankly antiquated in comparison to today's cell phones. That's just one example. Um, many of their computers and other things are also antiquated, with the notable exception of their voice interface being like leaps and bounds beyond ours it's one of those things where like the fantastical things that they were imagining uh went in a different direction than how reality has kind of progressed of course people are working on that but that's not beside the point so i think they did a really good job of trying to figure out how to make something be a prequel to the original series uh their enterprise um was it nx01 i don't remember exactly but their enterprise is cramped it is small it has like seven floors or something it's it's much smaller in that way but it's also built smaller like the engine room is more compact the bridge is more compact everywhere feels more compact more compressed uh and 
less flashy, less stylized, more utilitarian, and a lot more, frankly, submarine-like, which makes sense. So I think they did a really good job uh, on that front. Um, let's see. Other thoughts about that? I... I think they chose an interesting era as well. It's an era of transition um, as they're trying to go from uh, being what we've known or, yeah, basically going from before sort of the Federation to building up into that and kind of where some of the stuff came from, why things are the way they are. For example, why are humans who are relatively new to the scene uh, kind of such a prominent force in the Federation? Um, why... Uh, is the Prime Directive an important rule um, and all that sort of stuff. So I think they did a really good job of like setting stuff up and showing how the experiences that Captain Archer and his crew had influenced and informed uh, a lot of what came afterwards uh, in terms of internal chronology as opposed to real-world chronology. Um, in terms of the time travel, Temple Cold War stuff, that's fine, but frankly, I... I think I would have been just as happy without it. Like, I just don't have strong feelings one way or the other. Um, so I don't really have much to say about it uh, in that regard. How does Star Trek Enterprise compare to Star Trek Discovery Seasons 1, 2 as a prequel? I'm going to skip over this one for now because I want to just focus on Enterprise. Um, and there's a lot more here to talk about. Uh, but, like, it is an interesting question. And I'll just briefly say, like, creatively, I feel that... Um, Enterprise w had the benefit of kind of coming in a time before there was a, as m like, the expectation of shininess, I guess I'll say. Uh, and I think that that was beneficial to them. What are my thoughts on the various formats that uh, Star Trek Enterprise used? So for those who are maybe a little bit less familiar, um, Star Trek Enterprise had four seasons. The first two seasons are episodic. They function... Very similarly to how the original series Next Gen and Voyager worked, um, in particular, uh, Deep Space Nine was structured a bit differently. Uh, but it was very, very much so Star Trek in those first two seasons of just like, we're going out to explore and we're encountering things. It, it was a bit more like TNG how, um, or Voyager how, especially TNG, Vo Voyager has all things. We'll, we're not talking about here, that here though. Um, but TNG had like some recurring plots and themes and things like that um, of things that would show up or incidences that would that would recur. Uh, Enterprise did that a little bit more heavily, but overall it was episodic. Season three had a big long arc, and then season four had a bunch of shorter arcs, so just different structures going on. Um, I think they did a pretty good job with the first two seasons uh, with the episodic structure. Um, I remember enjoying it, but it was very much so like standard Star Trek fare. Um, what they did with season four and the mini arcs, I actually quite liked uh, the structure overall. The ability to kind of dig a little bit more deeply into the stories when they wanted to, because there's a few one-off episodes here and there, a couple two-parters, a couple three-parters. And that allowed them to be able to dig into things as they wanted to, but not feeling like they had to pad stuff out. And that was the problem with season three's arc. It just had a pacing issues where... The real challenge with doing a full season arc or anything serial is that you're so you're basically having to think of each episode as a scene within the broader story. And there's sort of this adage uh, that I've heard about like filmmaking and like TV shows in particular, but movies as well, is that like no movie is worth a scene, no scene is worth a line. It's this idea that just because there's something that you like in it doesn't mean that it's worth including. It needs to actually be part of the full story and pushing the full story forward. And what happened with season three of Enterprise is it just kind of got slow. Um, and it, there are spots where it really dragged narratively because they were doing a arc for the entire season, but they had a bunch of stuff that functioned kind of like extra scenes, kind of like you're watching a movie that has extra scenes. And it's just kind of feeling padded out and like it's... Um, got a bunch of extra stuff in there that's not advancing the story, so it doesn't matter how interesting it is because it, it doesn't feel related to your main point. Uh, and so I think season three suffered from that sort of effect. Um, and I think that that one's harder to kind of work with when you're going for something as long as what TV shows were at the time when there's like 20, 20, 
six episodes somewhere around like season three is like 24 26 episodes something like that so when you're trying to fill that many episodes doing something that has arcs like a long arc like that does require a lot more planning to make it all kind of fit together and that's just a lot Uh, i think the mini arcs work a little bit better for that um but like i thought all of the formats overall can work um i think the the mini arcs and the episodic ones work better for star trek in particular but um, let's go ahead and move on. What about that theme song? Yeah, that took a while to adjust to. I think one of the things that they're trying to do with Enterprise, because they didn't even call it Star Trek initially, they're just calling it Enterprise, is they're trying to distance themselves a bit from sort of the TNG Deep Space Nine Voyager block, or era, if you want to call it, of, uh, of Star Trek, where it was set in the same time period, uh, or like, you know, sequentially with each other where you you start off at tng and it builds up to deep space nine starting part way through that and then voyager starting part way through deep space nine at the end of of tng of next generation and um because of that sort of setup uh they're very much connected to each other in a, a very poignant way and i think they're very deliberately trying to separate themselves with enterprise where they're still doing the star trek thing but they weren't trying to um, make it feel like it was part of that block but just a broader part of the Star Trek universe in some regards Um, and the theme song kind of reflects that in some regards I came to really like the theme song but it it, it was a period of adjustment just like a lot of things were and I think uh, that actually brings us to how do I rank Star Trek Enterprise compared to other Star Trek series Uh, why do I think it is considered less good do you agree or not with that assessment and I think one of the things that's really difficult with ranking Star Trek Enterprise is the first impression is really rough. Um, you go in, you don't know the world situation because it is extremely divergent from everything else we have seen before in Star Trek. The um, Federation doesn't exist yet. Humanity is just sort of getting out into space with like actual exploration capabilities. Like they've had freighters, but the warp drive is very slow. Um, like warp one, warp maybe warp two if it's fast, right? And then those warp factors are relatively slow. Uh, it takes years to do um, shipping runs and things like that. So they are technically out and about, but not really. Uh, so Enterprise, with its warp five engine, is finally able to go fast enough to really begin exploring. So like having it pre-Federation, having completely different style of costume from what we've seen that's more of a jumpsuit that's more in line again i think they looked at like submarines and how those worked uh, and were much more closely inspired by those um it means that there's a lot of adjustment Uh, i remember when we first started watching it was like who is this guy who is that guy uh i had reed uh and trip confused malcolm reed and uh charles tucker the third that's why he's called trip for anybody who missed it It says it a couple of times throughout the course of the show but um I, I had those two characters confused because they were, at that point in, in time to me, generic white men who weren't the captain. <laughs> uh, then looked fairly similar. Um, the theme song came out of left field and was like, that's not what Star Trek sounds like. Um, the, the costumes were also confusing uh, because it's just like, everybody's just blue. I can't differentiate it to anyone. Um, and the Federation doesn't exist yet, so like the politics are very different. So it's just like there's a lot of adjustment right at the start. And it took us several episodes for me to kind of do that adjustment. Um, and I think that's something that's going to throw a lot of people off, especially if they're not expecting it. And you do eventually realize like who the the difference between Trip and, and Reed. And they're they're friends, but you know they are not the same person. Um, you do eventually realize that like there's color coding around sort of the shoulder area of the uh the uniforms to indicate i mean it's, it's the classic sort of red and gold and um teal i think i'd have to rewatch it's a subtle thing but like they're there they are actually present they have color indicators they're just not you know a shirt <laughs> like they have been in, in previous uh shows and um you get used to the federation is not there yet but the 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 beginnings of it, the seed of it is kind of, you see it kind of germinating. But like the mission, the goal um, is there. And so once you kind of get through that period of adjustment, um, I think the show kind of works. I think that, however, is going to mean that people are going to rank it lower. It's just kind of inevitable. 
and uh, because this is just going to just feel very, very different, in part because they're trying to go for something a bit different. So in terms of how I rank it with Star Treks, it's really hard for me to actually rank the Star Treks. Um, I probably would actually rank Enterprise somewhat lower. Uh, I'm looking at my thinking corner again as I'm trying to think through this, and I feel like Deep Space Nine is probably at the top for me. Uh, but see, okay, so here's here's the thing that's really, really difficult about trying to rank them. First of all, the original series is completely different because it's from a different era entirely. So it's hard to put that in a position with the other ones because there's too many extenuating circumstances. Um, but all of them have different things that I like. Like, I like the interplay between Kirk, Spock, and McCoy. Um, and I like some of the stuff that they were doing with the original series. I enjoy some amount of that 60s cheese, you know, the, the 60s camp. You have to be in a mindset for it, but um, I enjoy some of it. Um, I enjoy some of the character interactions with TNG, and I think TNG did overall, once it got to the third season and was actually a good show, um, I think it did a, a really good job of that sort of episodic exploration thing. Uh, Deep Space Nine had really interesting world building, and I really enjoyed the fact that they were sitting in a place and able to develop it really well, and I enjoyed the character relationships there as well. Like, overall, character relationships in Star Trek are all enjoyable and different. Um, Voyager, I really enjoyed Tom and uh, Bellana and uh, sort of the re- relationships that are going on there. Enterprise, likewise. Like, there's a lot of stuff that I enjoyed. It probably does rank slightly lower just because there is some inconsistency, but for me, it's not a low rank. It's just kind of like in the, yeah, this is solid Star Trek sort of rank uh, overall. And to me, there's not a whole lot of difference, but I can see why people would rank it lower. Um, And like, I can see a lot of the reasons that would lead to that, I think. I'd be curious to hear what your thoughts are in, in this regard. Like, how do you feel about it? Where, how do you sort of approach any sort of ranking exercise? Um, again, there's just different things that I like about different different ones, and like Voyager has a bad premise, so like that pulls it down. But it has some really interesting characters, so you know. And that's the thing is like Star Trek's at its best when it has an interesting ensemble of characters and their relationships. Um, and that's sort of what I enjoy most in some regards about Star Trek. Um, or at least I think draws in the most. But uh, anyway, what do I think of the characters? What do I like and dislike about them? Which is your favorite? Well, this is kind of piggybacking off what I've off of what I was just saying there. Um, yeah, overall, I like the characters. I think um, I think Archer is definitely the uh, as far as captains, he's probably lower on the captain's list just because i feel he's a bit of a less of an i like sort of the ideal but he's also a little bit of the like wild west captain in some regards because he's from that time even more so than kirk so um but he does take a fairly dark turn relative to star trek captains anyway as you go on um and i i think i like some of the other most of the other captains a bit better it's such a hard thing to do they're just so different that it's hard to kind of evaluate that um yeah i mean overall i like the characters i don't really have a whole lot more to say um i dislike that there wasn't more time to develop them more and their relationships more because the show ended after four seasons Uh, but i mean the original series ended after three so okay so we're gonna get into a bit more spoiler territory here um what do I think of the finale, both as an end to Star Trek Enterprise and to an end of Star Trek, or end of an era of Star Trek, excuse me. So I, I'm i okay with the finale. I don't think it's a very good finale for Enterprise. I feel like that's more the previous episode, Terra Prime. That's really asserting, like, no, we are going to, like, go out there and do this and befriend aliens and stuff. The finale with its... TNG tie-in I think was a really good way in theory to wrap up sort of the era the TNG uh, DS9 Voyager Enterprise era and I think that that was really cool I do think it could have been executed on significantly better um, but points for the the concept Um, I can 
I did not find it as disappointing as Voyager's finale. Well, we'll go with that and uh, kind of move on. What are my favorite, least favorite aspects of Star Trek Enterprise? Um, that's a hard question to answer. There's also a similar one. What do I wish the show had done or handled differently? Um, I wish it had handled the handled to Paul a little bit differently. Um, but that's we'll we'll talk about that. There's uh, my thoughts on some of the long running storylines. I'm going to try to keep this brief since I've gone pretty long today. Uh, the Andorians. I liked what they're doing with the uh, the Andorians and it tying in with the human Vulcan relationship. What I particularly like is the way that they demonstrated humans sort of newness allowing them to be able to walk into existing like relationships and bring a freshness to them and allow them to be able to be diplomatic actors who don't have baggage and i think that was really interesting and really powerful um and i liked how they did that and handled that uh, and worked about sort of interacting with that sort of space um i think it's interesting to see how vulcan society uh gets changed also by these events and also what i think is interesting is you see kind of a dichotomy between like the Vulcans that we know from previous stuff and then what they were in this era. And I think they did a really interesting job of like years, like how societies can kind of like forget their ways as um, forces may try to manipulate things and stuff. I thought that was kind of interesting. A Tempo Cold War we touched on earlier. The trip into Paul romance. I would I would have preferred to not have to Paul involved in a romance. Um, I don't necessarily mind the trip into Paul romance, but it's a little, it just, it puts the writers into a bit of a corner because of Spock being sort of declared the first half human, half Vulcan. It, it means that any sort of romance with, uh, between a human and Paul is going to be difficult. Um, I can understand the impulse but I think it would have been better if it hadn't been there. The creation of the Federation. I think that they did a really good job of like showing how that sort of, how the arrows were pointing towards that. Uh, and I do appreciate that they were like, here's why humans are so important to the Federation. It's because, and as I mentioned just a few moments ago, they came in new, somewhat new to the scene and were able to kind of act as more neutral negotiators in order to be able to to bring about peace in otherwise difficult relationships and to provide that sort of external perspective and to be able to gain trust with multiple groups and, and everything. And I think that was really cool. Um, what do I wish the show had done or handled differently? I, I kind of wish it had handled season three differently. I wish it had been um, more tightly written or something. It, it definitely could have used a little bit, a little bit of something. Um, I also wish that they'd done a little bit more with the costumes to just to make the uh, the rank or not the, the rank the the department indicators more obvious. Like we've gotten like if they had made the shoulders instead of just a stripe on the shoulders, if they'd made the full shoulders colored, I think that would have helped a lot uh, and sort of that um, differentiation. I think that would have helped uh, people connect. I do not know why they changed the theme song halfway through. That was weird. Um, I think probably the biggest thing is that it was just a very difficult like sort of transition when they're trying to figure out how to keep the show, like keep interest in the show. Um, and I don't know what they should have done differently for, for that regard or how I wish they might have handled things differently. But I definitely feel like season three, I kind of wish it had been um, more like season four where the Zindi thing was maybe wrapped up in like maybe make that an extended arc of like five or six episodes, but wrap it up relatively quickly compared to what it was and then just do more mini arcs. And I think that would have been more interesting and I would have liked to have seen that. Um, I would have liked to have seen uh, a bit more. Um, I, don't know, I would have liked to have seen Paul handle a bit differently. I feel like her character had some interesting stuff that she was going through um, and working with. It would have been nice to get a little bit more um, nuance to her. I'm not, I'm not quite sure what I'm looking for. I feel like they didn't really explore why she kept wanting to stay with the humans, like what her personal motivations were, especially in the beginning very well. Um, and it would have been interesting to see a little bit more with that. But um, 
yeah, I don't know. Uh, just some random random thoughts. Um, let's see. And there's one final final thing here that I'm going to talk about. The finale of Star Trek Enterprise is supposed to be a finale to an era of Star Trek from the late 80s to the early 2000s. Uh, what are my thoughts on this era of Star Trek as a whole and how Enterprise fits into it? How does this era compare to the earlier Star Trek, the original series films, and the later Star Trek Discovery and alternate universe films? Yeah, this is kind of just a big open-ended thing. I don't have much time, so I want to kind of wrap this up within half an hour if I can. Um, but yeah, just the this era of Star Trek is one that I've overall really enjoyed. Um, I like a lot of what they're trying to expand with the idea of what Star Trek is. Fundamentally, Star Trek is a show about challenging conceptions about society and exploring relationships between individuals and how individual relationships can change society and uh, the world. I think that's kind of a summary now that I'm thinking about it. And I think this era overall um, did a lot of interesting stuff and it kind of set the framework for what Star Trek is. The original series was had that basic like formula, that basic prototype. Um, and I think that was um but i mean it's very 60s right and so it's just like the change from there socially and all that sort of stuff discovery and alternate universe films I, i'll touch on this briefly i think one of the in a more generic sense i think one of the things that's a big challenge for star trek in the modern era is the modern era of television has moved very serial and i think star trek kind of actually functions at its best when it's partially serial when the universe and everything is serial, but they're not focused on a singular story, but when it functions more as like a slice of life sort of thing, where they, where you're kind of just following characters' lives uh, through the adventures that they are on. Um, and I think TNG or in the original series had sort of a really good premise that way. I liked Deep Space Nine. Uh, don't get me wrong. I, I really like Deep Space Nine. But in terms of the premise of Star Trek, I think that the, that original series premise of we're explorers and then bringing with it the what are the character relationships going on um, and how are those relationships working. I think fundamentally Star Trek, I like it best when it's open-ended, when there is no overarching plot or narrative driving pressure. This is the problem that Enterprise had in season three, where there is an overarching narrative plot driving narrative pressure. It is the problem Voyager had throughout because its premise inherently has narrative pressure. Are they going to get home? What's that going to be like? And so you, when you have some sort of overarching thing like that delivering narrative pressure, it distracts from the um, episodes that are exploring psychology and human nature. So, for example, um, in Enterprise Season 3, they had an episode where Phlox is taking care of everybody else as they're flying through some sort of um, energy field thing where he basically has to be by himself as everybody else is put under uh, in order to be able to not be mentally damaged, like have their brains damaged by this field and flocks because of his alien physiology is able to withstand it. Um, they've done that sort of theme before in other shows. Um, for example, I'm pretty sure data had an episode that had that sort of thing. I know seven of nine did. So they repeat that idea here. It's an interesting idea and it's interesting to explore it through flocks uh Nobelian physiology and sort of the effects of that. Except the problem with that episode is it contributes absolutely nothing to the overarching narrative of we're trying to stop the Zindi from destroying Earth. That's kind of a big deal. That's a lot of narrative pressure. So having an episode that is on the surface fairly interesting or explores a, you know, a common theme but a slightly different angle on it is fine. Except for the fact that it defies that narrative pressure. It, it goes against what's going on with, um, with things otherwise. And because of that, it intrinsically... Uh, starts to become annoying. And I, that problem happened with uh, Voyager. Like, I just wanted Voyager to get to an end because I wanted the catharsis of concluding that thing, that uh, that premise of they're on a journey home. Um, so I think the original series and um, Next Generation, with its inherent exploration theme, worked really well. Uh, I like that sort of structure for Star Trek. And I want the main sort of uh, gist of things to be what's the crew? What are their relationships? Um, and that sort of thing. One of the things that I'd most like to see from Star Trek in general is acquiring of new alien crew members, particularly like Voyager. It would have been really nice if they could have had more of that. 
But um, anyway, so in general, this is a challenge for trying to do stuff in the modern era just because of the preponderance of heavily serialized stuff. And I think if you ran it a little bit more like a cross between a soap opera and exploration of alien cultures in space, that's kind of where I want things to go. Um, but that might be a little bit of a hard pitch if studio execs and heads are like, no, no, everything has to be serial for binge max binge poll or whatever you want to call it, bingeability. So, uh, well, that brings me to basically the end of the time that I wanted to fill. <laughs> Actually, it's three times as long as I want to fill, but never mind that. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and wrap up here. Um, I thank you all very much for watching and listening. Uh, it's greatly appreciated. And if you want to be able to have a voice in future topics uh, and support me in sort of the stuff that I'm doing, you can go over to Patreon at patreon.com slash and uh, and become a patron and be able to have a voice in these. So, And as well as early access um, to things and, and whatnot. So thank you all very much. And uh, until next time, everyone, take care. And goodbye. <laughs>